Hello and welcome to a cook's tour and to the Sicilian inspired cocktail and wine pairing masterclass. I'm thrilled to have Lucy Roberts from the Vintner and Johan Svensson from Drinks Fusion for the aperitivo hour before Ben Tisch takes us to Sicily. Johan, we're starting Charlie. with cocktails. Yes, and how exciting. We're going to do some really fantastic uh, twist on the very famous aperitivo Negroni. Well, that's it. I mean, the Negroni really is sort of the cocktail of the moment. So what, what are the essential ingredients to a Negroni, first of all, and then tell us what have you done to Sicilianify that? Yeah, so uh, I mean, Negroni is, yes, it is. It's uh, one of the biggest drinks around at the moment all over the world. It's really popular. Mm. And what's really fun about it is that you can really sort of make interesting twists on it. <clears throat> but essentially, it's sort of, uh, there's lots of, like any classic cocktails, there's discussions of where it comes from and originated and so on. But supposedly, one of the theories is uh, from Florence in 1919. And, um, uh, it essentially consists of three elements, uh, a uh, gin and a bitter. We have a fantastic uh, uh, bitter from Contrato here and also a sweet of vermouth, um, which is also from Contrato. Um, and um, the idea is that you have three equal parts and then you sort of, sort of serve it on the rocks or dilute it or whatever. And you can do amazing twists on it. So we've done a bit of a, a Sicilian element where we're using Sicilian uh, blood orange that's grown on the slopes of Etna. And uh, um, also to give it a little bit more of a fun twist, I've used a grappa from oh. Marolo instead of a gin. And, oh, okay, instead of the gin. So what's the grappa going to give? It, a lot more of a, a full body character and mm. mustiness, etc. Because, you know, the, the grappa is what's left over from the wine production. So you have fantastic sort of tanning structures and things like that. In. And also to complicate it even more and make it even more elaborate, I've used a, a pistachio bitters, which we make ourselves with Sicilian pistachios and a little bit of cinnamon and things like that, just to sort of give a little bit of that last winter feel. <laughs> Sounds very good. So yeah, very so well should, we, should we do it? Yes, please, over to you. So this is it. Um, eff effectively what you do, you take a vessel. Yep. Uh, you can use, I use a fancy mixing glass here, but you could use a, um, a big pint glass or anything like that, if you have that at home. Um, and as usual, lots of ice. Okay. So, and the reason for that is you control the dilution much better. One of the absolute most important things with drinks making is understanding what dilution do to your drink. Too much makes it watery, not enough, make it maybe too intense. So you've got to really know your dilution. So nice dry ice, but halfway up. We're making two drinks, right? We certainly are. Keeping the rest for later. Yeah. Um, so you would say uh, equal parts, where, where how this is blended. So, um, we have effectively then sort of 25, 25 of, uh, uh, I'm going to be able to shake that. Um. <laughs> have you done a Negroni or two already? <laughs> exactly. Um, of each uh, uh, ingredient. Yeah. So that should be enough, pretty much. Yeah. yeah. Well, there it's sort go. of half a bottle because yeah. uh, each bottle is four serves. And it's a little bit. Uh, left after as well, potentially, if you need it. Um, and one of the things we uh, use to get the flavor out of the um, uh, blood orange is it's, it's uh, macerated in uh, Merlot's, um, Italian Merlot vinegar uh, with sugar for a few weeks. And that really gets a really lovely jammy flavor of the blood orange. Mm. It's, an old, it's called the shrub making, which is a really old fashioned way of preserving fruit uh, flavors or any flavor, really. And I suppose with any drink you're making, you're always looking to sort of, um, sort of intensify those flavors, aren't you? You're looking for the best expression of those flavors. To, to, exactly, to let them sort of open up, balance. It's all about balance, whether it is uh, uh, the intensity of the, the alcohol together with uh, the versus dilution mm. or sweetness against acidity, etc. It's all, it's all about that. And that's also why you, sort of the ingredients are, are so important. To, to get right. Mm -hmm. And we almost forgot a little bit of the pistachio in that. So, so what is in this little? So it's um, a brandy that's been infused with um, pistachios and cinnamon. And that was probably sort of three or four drops. Yeah, exactly. A couple of drops per drink is all you need. Give it a little bit of a um, extra character. Great. And uh, what you then do is uh, you can use, I'm going to use these big fancy ice cubes. Oh, no, you're showing off. <laughs> that, uh, we make uh, a drink solution where we effectively slow freeze the ice so all the uh, air bubbles disappear from it and it gets really nice and clear. And it also means that it um, 
melts a lot slower and mm. you control dilution again. This is what people in your trade call icebergs. Yeah, right? you, yeah, or clear ice. So I think it's the real, term. <laughs> yeah, icebergs, probably more the shape of it, but sort of large clear ice cubes to make it more of a, a, a enjoyable drinking experience also looks quite nice. But you can just use really large ice cubes if you have that at home as well, so that's not a problem. So what I've done here, you can see uh, when I stirred it for about 10 seconds or so, um, you get a really uh, intense uh, temperature. You can you sort of feel, what I usually do is I feel, if you just put your finger on it, you feel slightly above it is where you, yes. yeah, yeah. You, can, you, can, you know it's sort of ready when it starts getting cold above the liquid. And then we just pour it. Oh, the sound of Negroni being poured. I know, it's pretty special. <laughs> there we go. And then we can go on a shit with dehydrated blood orange and a little leaf, maybe. Lovely. What are the what are the leaves? Are the... Uh, these are olive leaves, so you have a, a mix um, in your boxes available. But uh, it's said nasturtiums, olive leaves, or etc. And give it a little bit of a break it up a bit. So it is spring isn't too far away. So let's try something colourful in there. <laughs> okay. um, and that's it. So yeah, please go ahead and try it. May I? Thank you. Of course. Oh dear, here we go. Mm. Smelling delicious. Mmm. Oh yes, that's rather good. It's a perfect setup oh. for a big meal, I think. Yeah, and I'm getting sort of in, uh, intense fruit, a little bit of spice. There's that sort of muskiness mm. of the grappa. Yeah, yeah. It gives a, you know, that's what's really fun with Negroni. You can really essentially move these uh, components around and make your own style. So it's very easy to make at home as well. That's but it's all down to having, having uh, uh, interesting ingredients. I love the addition of the blood orange. Yes. That works. It, well. really, really, it really gives an amazing character to it. Very quickly, Johan, because we need to move on to the wine. Just for, we were talking recently about how you, how you create these cocktails. Okay? Mm. So you've got your Negroni and you've turned it into the Sicilian Negroni. How do you sort of invent that in your mind, in your head? And how do you suddenly get that all into this drink? So I, I, I tend to look at sort of uh, the uh, region. Yeah. Uh, in particular, what's sort of typical. So blood orange, you know, the best blood oranges comes from Mount Etna. And, uh, uh, and um, then I sort of see how can I put it into something, you know, that works with um, the food we're going to be present, presenting. And the whole theme so it sort of works around it. And, and really it's, it's quite simple. It's by using the, the ingredients and finding a way for them to sort of inter interact with the classic drink. It sounds simple, but it kind of is. Like it's it's it really is, and not overcomplicating it. Brilliant. And using it what's in season, because you know if nature, nature makes it, and it's perfect. Well, that's what it's all about, and that's exactly. why we love having you on a cook's tour. Johan, thank you very very much. Thank you. I look forward to again seeing you in a couple of weeks. Indeed, look forward to it. Thank you. Thank you. Great. So um, cocktails made, and now I have the great pleasure of inviting Lucy Roberts to join me to chat a little bit about wine. Hello, hello. Lucy, hi. Hey. Warm welcome to a Cook's Tour. It's your first time. It's great to have yeah, you. Yeah, first board. time. Very happy to be here. Yeah, and you're from the Vintner. Yes, I'm from Vintner. Brilliant. Well, welcome. And um, thank you for bringing these lovely um, wines for us to try. Very well. Um, go on, tell us a little bit about Sicilian wine. Yeah, so Sicily offers a really exciting kind of wine opportunity because the terroir, which is what wine folk use to kind of describe geographical elements that feed into why wine tastes like it does. So it thinks about topography, it thinks about soils, it thinks about climate. And Sicily has this really unique offering in the sense of it's got this crazy varied topography, mm -hmm. like mountains, volcanoes, you know, the works. And also these super rich soils full of volcanic rocks that make these wines super rich and they have really unique character. And they also have a number of indigenous grapes, which basically means the grapes you will only really find in Sicily. So the character is amazing and they're really expressive. And when you have them, they're just like bang. This is Sicilian wine and it's great. And they're also super food friendly because as Ben will demonstrate, the food is amazing and the wine is amazing. So it was a great opportunity. When you said Sicily, I was like, very excited. On board, yeah, brilliant. Well, definitely. there you go. I mean, what an intro, folks. Um, let's try some wine. Yeah. Where should we start? So we will start with the white wine. So mm -hmm. this is a current Carinta. Mm. So this is again an indigenous grape variety. It is very high in acid. So if I was going to compare it to a wine that you guys might know more familiar, yep. 
uh, it would probably be Riesling. So really, really high in acid. And that is why I chose it, because it will go really nicely with the mackerel and will also go quite nicely with the watermelon. So this is from the slopes of Mount Etna. It's about 600 meters above um, sea level, which is where you'll find this vineyard, mm. on nice south-facing slopes, which basically means that it gets a lot of sunshine. So it's rich in flavor. It's got those volcanic soils. Everything about it should be really lovely acidity, lots of citrus flavors. So it's going to go with that mackerel beautifully. Oh, yeah. This has also had a little bit of extra time on the lees, which basically means it kind of makes the acidity a little bit less aggressive because sometimes something too acidic, you don't want to be sort of chopping your lips. But um, mm. this hopefully should be very well rounded, citrusy. Maybe some, there's a little bit of fennel on there as well, something slightly herbaceous, which should go nicely with the, I think there's fennel with the mackerel, isn't mm. there? But, yeah. Delicious. Voila. Delicious. Very, yeah. about the acidity, it's sort of, it's getting my mouth going. Yeah, exactly. But it's not so much that you're sort of wincing, which is where the kind of extra contact with the lees has been really helpful. Wincing and mm. wine drinking is not something I'm, yeah, I'm know. known for doing, actually. Definitely but, not. But you're right about acidity, and um, when matching food and wine, it's about looking for those sort of similar to sort of characteristic yeah. profiles. So, macro crudo and this is going to be... Absolutely. Uh, so, a really special. simple thing about acidity when it comes to wine and food matching. It's really simple because if something is acidic in the wine, you want to go for acidic foods. So, very simple. Yeah. Well, I love it. Delicious. Good. We're off to, off to a good start. Yeah, okay. And um, the red is from the same producer. Yes. So, they are both from Nicosia, who is a very, very well-known uh, producer in the region. They're at the very foot of Mount Etna, so mm. um, really interesting place to travel to. I think if I was going to go to anywhere traveling wine country. Um, Sicily is such an amazing place to go because you'll be kind of driving around these very remote and volcanoes and mountains everywhere and then you'll suddenly like dive into a little a little vineyard and they kind of just pop out of nowhere and it's it's beautiful and I would definitely recommend a trip to Sicily. Well I was gonna I mean pour away. But, and, and I will. Do, let me just ask you about um, uh, Sicilian wine because you, you know you, 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 you're, you're sort of romanticizing it so beautifully which I think is is absolutely spot on because it is you know island in the Mediterranean it's volcanic obviously surrounded by water I mean it, it, it must be quite unique Sicilian wine in, in, in context to its neighbors yeah right? yeah a hundred percent it is very unique and as I said it is it is quite a romantic place um, to talk about wine because it kind of dates back to Greek mythology about how Bacchus the wine of the god of wine kind of traveled to Sicily planted the first vines and it's got a nice story to it which is always nice when you're talking about wine when you can make it a bit romantic um, and as I said there's so many elements that feed into the unique qualities it's got because it's quite a small island it's got the nice ocean breezes which are kind of mitigating forces from the warm heat. Uh, it's got the volcanic soils, which you will be able to taste actually probably a little bit more in this one, um, just because it's a little bit richer. But it adds such unique quality, and they have all these indigenous grape varieties, which I love to see because it's nice to see when they're championing things that are local to an area, which you hopefully be able to taste. Yeah, which adds well, I can, this this. This smells volcanic. I mean, I yeah. love the colour of it too. Look at that. Yes, yeah, so this is a Norello Masalese, which is, again, indigenous to the area. And it's probably, mm. this is an Etna Rosso, which is probably the best known red wine from Sicily. Um, it's a great wine. I love it. Um, and it's very similar to Pinot Noir in terms of style. It's got that light. That's why you can see it's got this lovely colour, which you can kind of, if you look above, you can see sort of like your hand holding the um, stem. But yeah, it's got that really lovely light character, but it's very, very fruit forward and also has this kind of a little bit of spiciness. It turns into a little bit leathery because it's had a little bit of time on oak. But again, you get that really nice kind of fresh fruitiness, which is just delicious. And I've already gone for it <laughs> and I love it. I really love it. Getting ahead of yourself. Okay. Yeah. It's delicious. Yeah, again, absolutely delicious. And this is going to be such a good match with that duck. It's got the cherry, the raspberries, a little bit of spice, and again, that minerality. You can taste it. There's something slightly unique about it. Mm. And the finish, it kind of leaves you with this nice, refreshing, but you've got a little bit of something, something on the palate. It's delicious. I think it's great. Oh. I'm all over that. <laughs> I think we'll leave the bottle on the set because that is so delicious. Um, okay, last question to you. Sicilian wine on the world stage, yeah. where does it stand in your sort of opinion? I think it, what I love about Sicily is that, that they kept, they kind of protected their wines for a while. They didn't kind of 
try and go super international with their kind of exports um, and they really value their indigenous grape varieties um, which I think is fantastic and they are kind of exploring the world stage a little bit more but they're also kind of they're really doing a good job of meeting modernizing forces while also kind of keeping tradition so you'll see a lot of organic you'll see a lot of uh, vegan so this is organic vegan everything it's very 2022 um, might not give you a hangover maybe if you don't finish the bottle but um, no it's a really exciting place and for foodies such as all of us um, it's a really exciting place to be brilliant Lucy thank you so much for your time and thank you for introducing these wonderful wines and um, folks we will see you in a few minutes when we'll be joined by Ben Tish and uh, very excited by his trip to Sicilia
Good evening and a warm welcome to a cook's tour. Good evening and a warm welcome to a Cook's Tour and to our next destination, Sicilia. My name is Charlie Grant Peterkin and I am delighted to be joined this evening by the brilliant Ben Tisch. Classically trained with over 20 years experience, Ben is known for his Sicilian Moorish influenced food and being at the helm of iconic London restaurants including Salt Yard and Norma. Most recently, he's been appointed to the executive team at Kubrit House a group of high-end London gastropubs. Ben is an accomplished, award-winning food writer with five published cookbooks, including Cecilia, which was published in June 21 to critical acclaim. And here is that book. And here is Ben. Hello, how are you? I'm very well indeed. I'm so pleased that you have joined us on a Cook's Tour. Very, very honoured to be here. It's great to have you yeah. on board. And, um, I absolutely adore your book. Thank you very I've much, read it yeah. from cover to cover. Yeah. And to say that you are passionate about Sicilian food is, is just a mild understatement. Mm. Why? Where did it all come from? Um, well, I suppose it started probably about 15 years ago, maybe a bit longer, when I uh, really started to kind of find the, my food direction, if you like, and it was always kind of Italy. I seemed to be gravitating back to Italy. And obviously, it, it, Italy's a big place um, from, from north to south. Um, and so the more time I spent there in Italy, the more time I started gravitating south mm. um, and liking the, the, you know, the more of the, the, the tomatoes and olive oil as opposed to butter and cream and things that okay. you, you get in the north. And then, you know, and then I found myself in Sicily. It's an amazing place to go and visit. If you haven't been, you, you, you need to go. I mean, it's quite rugged and it's quite wild in parts, you know, and, and, and I like that. But the culture there and the, and the food culture, the, you know, the, 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 the Sicilians are, are, are amazing people, mm. incredibly passionate and, you know, uh, about their food and food culture and you know it's their way and that's kind of it and I I love all that but I think you know it's um, it's the diversity of, of Sicily that yeah. really interests me in the food and the fact that you know they've been um, you know uh, invaded and dominated and ruled by many different kind of uh, you know um, you know, nations o o over the years um, and the, the most probably prevalent um, that's still prevalent influence that's still there is kind of the Moorish Arabic mm. influence um, across the island, particularly in particularly in the West, and and the way it kind of melds with their existing cuisine, I find absolutely fascinating. Um, and you know, so it's you know, you could be in North Africa, um, but you know, you're you're sat having pasta and and the flavours, and you know, it's it, it is is unique. There's nothing so like it. It really is a sort of a genuine sort of culinary mel melting pot. It, it, yeah, absolutely, and and a real contrast as well. You know, because it is uh, you know not so much now, but you know, Sicily's had lots of poverty. Um, over over the years, and so they've had to kind of make do the mm. best they can with the ingredients they've had, and you know the food's more exciting for that. They've really kind of grasped that, and you know, um, you know things like, you know, putting uh, th their leftover uh, culture, you know, pasta al forno, for example, and you know something similar that we're going to be cooking today. It's really born out of uh, a leftovers. You, you've cooked your pasta one day, eaten it as you would, and then the pasta that's left over is then created into another amazing dish the next day by putting it through the oven and adding various things with it. And I think they're genius at that. So I, yeah, it's fantastic. Oh, well, um, looking forward to um, hearing and learning so much yeah. more over the next sort of 45 minutes to an hour. Um, so um, without any further ado, let's just run through a little bit of housekeeping um, to those who are new to a cook's tour. 
We're, we're, we're getting hot in the kitchen tonight. We're going to be setting our ovens to 220 degrees. So pop those on 220 degrees. Um, you're welcome to cook along with Ben. Um, and please do, if you're up for it, you can press the space bar to pause. Um, but we will be going at a moderate pace. But you can press the space bar if you need to. And always press again to release yourself. Um, or you can cook later. Um, so sit back, relax, enjoy the lovely Sicilian Negroni or tuck into the wines. And you can cook along later or even indeed on uh, Friday. The choice is yours. We have the live chat function, so any questions, please fire away. Michael will respond. Um, and of course, we've got the instruction booklet, which accompanies the cook along. So please use that as a reference. As ever, we just love seeing photographs of your creations. And we've got five incredible dishes being created this evening. So um, snap away and post those photos on Instagram, tagging in us um, at a cook's tour and also him, Ben.Tish. Um, because um, the best photographs, the winner, will get a complimentary box to our next destination, the final in the winter tour, which is going to be an epic with Sabrina Gay or in two weeks' time. So um, that's that. Um, and now on to this, which is a fabulous cook along with Ben. Ben, so remind us, what is on the menu this evening, sir? OK, so the um, so dishes we have are, are, are very, uh, so we start with a very light, fresh um, mackerel crudo with mm -hmm. fennel. Um, uh, crudo is very popular in Sicily um, and, uh, you, know, it's, you know, raw, essentially lightly cured or, or raw fish um, because it's so hot there. It's great to eat in, 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 yeah. the, in, the, in the summer. I know we're, in the winter, but this is fantastic using uh, beautiful mackerel. So that's uh, and some preserved lemon in there as well, the North African influence. Um, we also are going to be making um, a beautiful watermelon salad. Um, with uh, some um, some fennel fronds in there uh, and some beautiful pistachios and blue mm. cheese in there as well. It's delicious, kind of sweet, uh, sweet salty salad. Um, then we're going to be doing uh, a baked pasta. We talked about that earlier. So with pumpkin and rosemary, uh, baked through the oven um, with kind of a bechamel, and then it's finished with a, a really nice uh, rosemary brown butter over the top. Um, then we've got duck. Um, so we've got duck leg and uh, breast. Um, that we're going to just basically cook. To, duck breast will be nice and pink, and the um, the duck leg will be nice and crispy. And we serve that with blood orange. Uh, it's nice and seasonal, and we've got blood orange uh, sauce as well to go with that. That's a really really lovely dish, one of my mm. favourites. Uh, and then to finish, we've got these uh, baki um, kissing biscuits. They're known as so they're kind of a, a, a fried uh, batter um, done on a special iron that's that's been done for you. Um, and then um, they are served with a, a ricotta a ricotta cream in the middle. Gosh, fabulous! And just looking at this array of ingredients, I sort of see Italy, I see Sicily, but I also sort of see that sort of North Africa. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly that. Just kind of. Great. Wafting for it. Wafting for it. <laughs> um, great. Well, what an array. And let's make a start. And um, great. first up is the mackerel crudo. Mackerel crudo, indeed. Yeah. So this is, you know, a, a, a pretty, um, pretty simple dish, really. Thank you. Um, so we've got these lovely, um, lovely mackerel fillets here. Mackerel, one of my favourite fish. Should I pop you on the um, the blue ball? Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Yes. Indeed. About that. Good point. Um, and yeah, these are really, really nice, nice and firm. And then what you want to do is um, we're going to take the skin off. Uh -huh. Okay, so nice sharp knife. A long one is best, so you get the whole. Um, you can get, kind of get the whole thing off in one go. Just start at the tail. And you're holding quite firmly. Holding the tail quite firmly, and then just literally sliding the knife under there, like so. Yeah. Yeah, got you. And like that. That's what you want to do. Okay. Simple as. Simple as. Pop that over there. And then um, there's a few bones down the middle. So what we want to do is just kind of literally just cut out the very center. Okay. Like so. Yeah. And that'll take all your bones out. And that's it. So it's pretty, it's one of the easiest fish to, uh, to fill it in that respect. Yeah. And why would you choose mackerel for this dish? Um, it's one of my favourite fish. I think the, mm. the oiliness works really well with um, with the flavours that are added to it. Mackerel wouldn't necessarily be used in Sicily. 
Um, you know, it's not a, it's not a hugely popular fish. They might use uh, more of a white fish, or they might use sardines or something like that as well. Um, but you know, I, I, you know, I think the the whole point is, you know, my I, whilst I love Sicily, I will always kind of adapt um, to what happens in the UK as well. Do you yes. know what I mean? I just think what's best. You understand? And, yeah. yeah. And so that's my that's my kind of philosophy yeah. on it. Anyway, so that's cut, and then we're just going to cut these uh, into pieces. We don't want them too thin. I, I like to keep it. And I noticed you're, you're doing it at sort of a little angle, a 45 degree angle. Yeah, I just think it kind of looks better and it kind of exposes it a bit more. We're going to kind of cure it with the citrus oh, and things like that. Okay. Um, so just pop that in the bowl. Okay, so pop that all into a bowl. Yeah. Delicious. And, get that out of the way. and how can you tell if you've got some good mackerel? Isn't it? Um, so good mackerel, so it should be, uh, excuse me, just put my hands in that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, you know, with all fish, it should look fresh. It should look fresh. It should look vibrant. It shouldn't smell of anything other than um, sea, the sea, yeah. you know, a, kind of a, a fresh brininess. And it should look bright, you know, and it should be firm. I okay. think they're the, they're the, they're the key things. Top really. tips there. Yeah. Okay, um, so that's that there. Then we've got our uh, fennel. So we've got some beautiful fennel here. Mm -hmm. um, the fronds are good. We've got extra fronds as well, but this is all for the good. And then we're literally just going to it down the middle and we want to slice this quite thinly take out the core because that can be a bit tough yeah. unless you're kind of cooking it and then get a sharp knife take your time with this it's important that you want it thin if it's too thick it won't kind of cure with the um, with the citrus and things like that it'll take too long so so you just want to just slice and could some of our pro chefs at home sort of get out their mandolin for this they could do if if if, if, if by all means they could yeah I mean um, you know, I be honest with you, I'm I'm not a, a mandolin fan. You value your knuckles. I value my. I've, I've had some accidents with mandolins in the past, even as uh, so. But um, anyway, a good a good sharp knife certainly yeah. does the job. But uh, something like that, yeah. So okay, so looking to you, sort of half of a half. Yeah, yeah. Pop and that the rest will go in the fridge for a salad in the coming days. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Let's pop that in there, mm -hmm. and then I want to put some of these fronds in as well. Okay. As I say, because they are. Well, they're too good not to. Too good not to, yeah. Okay, so just pop that to the side. Okay. Uh, and then we've got uh, a lemon. We've got the extra fennel fronds. I do want to put those in because they're, you know, they are really, it's a kind of a different fennel flavor. It's kind of more fragrant. Um, and we're gonna save a little bit for the top. Mm. Um, I guess it also adds that sort of little bit of color to the dish. It, it, exactly that, the contrast. So, um, good squeeze of lemon in there. Mm -hmm. About half a lemon, I think, for that. Yeah, so, and I suppose as soon as the lemon goes in, it, it actually starts. It starts, the whole thing starts. The process. And then we've got these lovely preserved lemons. I, I love preserved lemons. I mean, they're just so much more than the sum of their parts, really, in that, well, they are, it's just lemon and salt, really, and perhaps, perhaps a little bit of sugar that's been left over time, but what that, what that creates is kind of a, a incredible depth of flavor. It's pickle, it's sweet, it's mm. sour, it does lots, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's really good, so. The one thing I've noticed with pickled lemons is they're sort of mini as well, they're mini lemons. Yes. Is there a reason why they're sort of caught in their youth, or is that just the, the variety they use? That's just the, that's just the variety that's they it. use, yeah. I mean, we, you know, you can make your, um, you know, we, I, I, I make, I make uh, mm. my own pickled lemons and, and use kind of the larger ones, so, okay. yeah. So put that in there as well. So that's, so that's, that's just one whole little lemon. Yeah, sure. yeah. Exactly. Chopping up. Yeah. And then, really importantly, uh, we're going to add some salt, pepper in there as well. Yeah. And salt, obviously, for flavour, but it's also, you know, it's part of the curing process as well. You know, you know, it, it, it'll, it'll start to kind of gradually break things down and cook and, you know, and all those things. And that's kind of it, really. And then we just... Simple as. Yeah, oh no, very simple, very yeah. simple. Toss it Get through. Get your hands in there. Get your hands in there. Do it really gently. Don't, don't go in heavy handed you want to you don't want to break the fish up okay but just a nice gentle like you were mixing a, a mixed leaf salad yeah so nice and nice and gentle and then you know you can see already the the mackerel has started to change color a little bit yeah um, just starting to get a kind of a white uh, a, a, a white on the surface and that's that's due to the um, that's that's due to the citrus and the salt yeah okay so that's all nicely mixed through and how long can this sort of comfortably sort of, you know... So, absolutely. So pieces cut like this, 
25, 30 minutes, something like that, perhaps, perhaps longer. I mean, I wouldn't, this, this is the kind of dish that you need to make and then leave, you can leave it. I wouldn't suggest making this like the day before because okay. then it would be over cured. Fine. Do you know what I mean? The yeah. citrus would have too much on it. It's not, it's not the point of the dish. So it's something you kind of need to make and you can leave, like I say, for half an hour or so and that's absolutely fine. Perfect. You would need to leave it at least 10 minutes for it to start it's doing its thing, yeah? Great. Yeah, makes sense. Okay, so, yeah, so um, we're ready to kind of finish plating this one, yeah. absolutely, yeah. Okay. Yeah. There we are, Chef. Okay, thank you. So, really... Oh, I like this hands-on approach. Yeah. Yeah. This is kind of a... It's the way to do it. This is the, this is the chef a bit. I mean, by all means, use a spoon. I mean, I, this is... This is um, you know, this is how I, uh, how I go at home as well. My, yeah. my, my wife's always like, you know, in the <laughs> restaurant kitchen now, you know what I mean? But it's just, it's, it's for surprise. No, so. but I love that sort of, I love physical food. You know? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. All your body parts involved. Yeah. I mean, this is such a delicious dish. I mean, uh, uh, you exactly, know, it's, yeah. there's, you know, as you've seen, there's not a huge amount to it, really. Um, but it's just all about freshness, yeah. vibrancy. And this is Beautif a dish that beautiful ingredient. It can be recreated at home. Oh yeah, yeah, ab and, absolutely. And great for a cheeky dinner party. Look great for a great for a cheeky dinner party. Absolutely. It's amazing. Those. And then um, and then we so we've got our little um, extra fennel fronds, which yeah. are, you know, they're gorgeous, aren't they? Really. I mean, um, and as I say, that's a kind of a slightly different flavour. A um, little bit of olive oil. Yeah. Oh, and then. That is. That is wonderful. That's ready to rock and roll. Very good. Okay. Great. Okay. First dish done. Great. Lovely, Ben. I'll move that out of the way. Yeah. We will, um, yeah. I'm just going to move this yeah. stuff. I think. Wipe down a bit. Yes. Welcome to. Yeah. Hand over here as well. Thank you very much. There we go. Great. Okay. Pop that down there. Yeah. So we're moving on to the pasta. Yeah. Um, Great. There we go. These are all the bits and pieces I think you need. Fantastic, thank you. So this again. So this is this is. I loved it with your your intro. You were talking about yeah, sort of Sicilians wanting to sort of you know uh, very resourceful. Yes. So this is an example of sort of resourcefulness, if you like. It, it is. It is. I mean, you know, I think it's an example of it. I mean, obviously, what we are doing here is creating almost a leftover dish from yeah. from scratch <laughs> because that's just how it, how it is. But you know, this. The idea for these dishes were, were born out of yeah. the fact that, you know, you cooked a load of pasta on a Saturday night, there was some left over, and then on a Sunday, traditionally in Sicily, Sunday is a leftover pasta day. So pasta al forno, or, um, you know, there's a dish um, that we recreated at, at Norma when I was there, um, which was spaghetti fritters. Um, and it was leftover spaghetti, traditionally, that were then swirled with some egg. Um, and some parmesan mm. into kind of that and then deep fried oh. and so you have those on a Sunday night absolutely oh, delicious that is something I've um, to try. yeah so yeah but anyway you get the picture I get the picture you and get I'm the sure, picture you know, there'll, be, there'll be some of our cooks at home thinking yeah well I'm gonna cook this tonight and yeah I'll have a little bit tonight and I'm gonna enjoy this tomorrow yes and it's one of those things yeah actually, you know, Tomorrow it's going to taste a little bit different, but just as good. Yes, yeah, mm. absolutely. Okay, but anyway, the pasta, as you saw, um, we've got this, these lovely pasta shells. Um, and then this brilliant container, actually, as well, that, um, that we're actually going to bake back in well, there. we're being resourceful. We're being resourceful, That's which it. is all in the spirit of Sicily. Yes. So, um, which is great. Um, so what we need to do is you take the pasta out, and then we've got... Um, a ready-made bechamel sauce. Delicious, and what's in there? So bechamel sauce is uh, cream, mm -hmm. uh, sorry, milk, um, butter, flour, basically. Yeah. And some seasoning, yeah. Great. And that's kind of the base of it. Um, yeah, we're just ready for you, so you don't need to yeah, we'll take make, all make all that. The, take away all the faff. I'm sure everyone knows how to make a basic bechamel. Well, you would think so. a little bit of extra you would Sicilian so. love in it. Yeah, so just kind of, Roughly mm -hmm. spread that out. I mean, as it goes in the oven anyway, it will kind of um, it will start to kind of melt and bubble and so on. But you want to kind of do that as a base. Yeah. Lovely. Yeah. Okay. There we go. And then just pop that around. And these shells, they're called what are they called? Con Conciglioni. Conciglioni. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't come across them before. I have to admit. Yeah, well, there's different. There are different sizes, and yeah. you know, but yeah, these these are great. So, um, and the pasta's obviously cooked. Yeah. Um, as it should be for a 
you know, a, a, a pastoral fauna. Okay, so, so there's that. Um, and then with our shells, so just pop them in upside shell, you know, the opening side up, mm -hmm. like so. There we go. Like that. And I think actually, you know, with this paper and everything, it's, it's, a, re it's a really nice kind of presentation, kind of nice and rustic, you know what I mean? Yeah, I like it. Yeah. Okay, great. There's your butternut squash on standby. That's fantastic. Yeah, so, yeah, so the squash or um, kind of pumpkin mix. Mm. Um, so what we then do is pop this on top. There we go. So you're trying to sort of tuck it into the shells? Tuck it into the shell, yeah, yeah, casually. tuck it into the shells a bit. I think, you know, again, as it kind of goes, um, as it goes in the oven, it will all kind of work itself out, yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? And um, where did the sort of the inspiration for this dish sort of come from, is it? Well, again, it's, you know, uh, it, it, uh, um, exploring, you know, this created for, specifically created for the book, to be honest. Yeah. Um, you know, exploring um, where the baked pastas come from. Yes. Um, and, and why, and I wanted to do this, and I love, I love pumpkin and squash. You yeah. know, it's a real kind of wintry, um, you know, it's a, it's, it's, it's a seasonal winter thing. And yeah, I just, I just thought, um, just it's created it, yeah. Just, I just thought it's going to work. It, this, as I say, it was a, a recipe created mm. for the book. You wouldn't probably. I mean, I don't think I've, I. I wouldn't necessarily see this type of one in, in Sicily. Again, it's my yeah. my my spin on it, if you like. Um, and when when so when writing Sicily, I mean, it, 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 I mean, you've got to come up with so much originality. Yeah, yeah. And um, I guess it's it's a bit like a musician creating an album. You you, you have to sort of start from scratch and jot down some ideas, and off you go. Well, you do, yeah. I mean, I guess I had a bank. You know, I spe spent a lot of time yeah. in Sicily, so you know, always writing kind of ideas down and then you, you can, sort of jotter in your back pocket yeah well exactly that and obviously phone and cam you know and, and, and all the rest of it um, but um, yeah it's just about kind of going around so um, so I just need the, the cheese. Great, uh, yeah. cheese is here yeah cheese is there thank that? you yeah that's yeah. it yeah no that's, no, no, that's, that's butter. I need the cheese. Oh, cheese is there thank yeah, you that all right say butter. yeah <laughs> That's all right. Great the butter. Yeah. On top. Great the butter. That I'm could be quite. Good. Why not? Yeah. <laughs> I'm in. Okay. Um, okay. So the um, so so the pumpkins on there. Uh, as, you, as you can see, I've kind of done it quite rustily, but that's absolutely fine. And then um, and then we've got our cheese on top here. And this is Fontina. Am I right in thinking that? Yeah. Yeah. Um, which is quite a pokey, punchy cheese, you know, but it's it's lovely. Yeah. And so we just get that all over. Like so, yeah. So you jot down the recipes in your book, take photographs on your phone, yeah, and then and, and then and then go home and, and have a think about it. I mean, yeah. it's you know, I've there's there's a lot of Sicilian books out there, yeah. um, and they're all quite similar. You know, they've all got the classics in there. You know, pasta on all of this, you know. And so what I wanted to do was obviously include a few of those, but then offer my interpretation and just make them a bit more. Mm. relevant and current you know and and um, so so yeah so that's what I, I do with all my books yeah. actually okay. I, you know rather than being kind of traditional so um, so the cheese is on top um, and we're gonna pop that in the oven Brilliant. it's gonna take about 25 minutes half an hour Perfect. there we go straight in that container which is no problem um, and then the other element for um, for that dish, which is which is quite a nice thing, and again, certainly not Sicilian traditional, but I experiment and it, it really works. Is when um, the past when the bake comes out, we add a, a, a like a, a brown butter sauce type thing yeah. um, over the top, and it just works really well with the pumpkin and and everything, and it just kind of brings everything together. So. Um, I've got a pan on here, yeah. um, a kind of a medium hot pan. You want it hot. The idea is that we're going to put the butter in and we're going to turn the butter brown. Uh, Bernoisette is another yeah. name, nut brown butter. Yeah. Um, and that's quite important that you get it to that. If it's under, it's just melted butter. And obviously if it goes too far, then it's burnt butter. Okay. So, so but, but, but you know, you can see it. And then, and then how you stop that process is by adding um, some lemon and rosemary into it. So when the butter reaches that stage, you take it off. We're going to do it now. And it's, it's, it's a good, generous knob of butter in there. It's a good, butter, generous knob of butter, yeah. And it, yeah. 
yeah. Do it properly. Yeah. I mean, and you know, this this type of sort, brown butter is great for lots of things, fish and things like that. You know, a, a, a brown butter with lemon and rosemary over a nice piece of grilled fish and things oh. like that is absolutely fantastic. Yeah, so definitely. it's a it's a real workhorse um, sauce actually. Yeah. Um, but it, it's just really nice on this. So. So. So you want to get that nice and hot. Yeah, we get it nice and hot. It's foaming yeah, away. So that's spot on. While it's doing that, you can add a pinch of salt in there as well. Yeah. yeah. And um, just your Sicilia, your book, have you yeah. actually, I mean, have, what do Sicilians make of it? Um, yeah, well, I mean, you know, it's a, bit, a mix. Yeah, a mix. you've got some, you know, a bit yeah. of invention in there too. A mix. So, um, you said they're very proud about their Yeah, yeah, no, it's, there's, there's, been, there's been a real mix. And I think what I wanted, I knew, I knew, um, so I think, I think largely I've had a lot of Sicilians approach me and say, this is actually quite a refreshing book yeah. and, you know, it's, it's inspirational and we appreciate that you've, you know, they, you know, they take these things really seriously. Yeah. Um, and I wanted, you know, I, and in the, in the intro and all over the book, I've been very specific saying, look, I'm not Sicilian. I haven't lived in Sicily, yeah. but I've traveled there a lot and this is my inspiration and I work in London and this is my interpretation of Sicily. Mm. It's not. 100% authentic yeah. to Sicily in that respect. It's authentic in that I'm passionate about it and I love it and I love the food, but you know, I wasn't brought up with a Sicilian grandmother <laughs> cooking by her side, you know, that kind of thing. And so I was very specific about that because I knew that if I wasn't, I'd get a backlash of Sicilian saying, well, yeah. don't get this in Sicily, yeah. you know. And so um, there's, there, was, but there has been a little bit, I'll be honest, but, um, but largely I think Sicilians have, 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 have appreciated it. Yeah. I was going to say they probably hugely appreciate it. And I think it's, you know, I mean, yeah. it's wonderful that they can see a, you know, a, a brilliant British chef like yourself, you know, passionate about Sicily and, and putting their sort of interpretation, their sort of spin on it. And yes, their, you know, yeah. How they well, well, exactly, and, and, and that's, what, that's what I wanted to do. Yeah. So, so anyway, I, I think, you know, hopefully, Certainly gone some way to achieving that. Okay, so um, just a, a, a couple of minutes. Mm -hmm. It's just starting to turn now. Okay, Good. and then yeah, we've got some rosemary. So all I've done is pick the rosemary leaves off the stalk. Yeah, uh, I'm not chopping it or anything like that. Doesn't need to be, um, and that's going to go in there as well. Yeah, it'll be okay. good to go. So. So let's have a look at this because yeah, if we are have... getting close, aren't we? And what are you looking for? So we're just looking for it to start to turn a, like a nut, I, I guess okay, a nut so brown co uh, colour. Well, yeah, it starts to foam and then, yeah, it will just start to turn now. And what you're doing is you're, the, the, uh, the milk solids in there, that's what you're caramelising. Oh. Okay, and, it, and that's the flavour. So you can kind of see, I don't know if you can kind of see that, it's just literally going there now. You see the colour of the... I can, yeah, yeah. 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 So that is, that's kind of... Sort of a, yeah, when it's a nut brown a, a, a nut brown colour, and that's, and that's exactly it. So then what you do at that stage is, see, that's perfect, yeah? Yeah. So we're going to pull that off the heat, yeah? Yeah. I'm going to add my rosemary in there. It'll yeah. Oh, my word. That's kind of sort what... Of deep frying rosemary. In deep frying rosemary, and then lemon. Yeah. And obviously what that will do is that creates a sauce, really. Um, but also, but also the, adding the lemon and the rosemary in there arrests the cooking process so it doesn't go any further. Mm. Do, you know, do you know what I mean? It doesn't go, yeah. Yeah, so it halts it. Yeah, exactly that. So, so yeah, so you can just pull that off, leave that to one side. And that can just hang those flavours sort of infuse. That'll infuse, yeah, just leave it kind of there, just warm, and then when the, um, when the pasta's ready, that will, um, we'll, that we'll, we'll pour that over the top. Great, Ben. Okay. Brilliant. Okay, we're, so we're moving on through, um, and well, now we're on to sort of the showpiece, isn't it? Really? It's yes, duck. yes, indeed, the duck. Um, so it's got a couple of stages to it, but the yeah. first is um, roasting the leg. Roasting the leg. Yeah, we've got that. Um, yes. Yeah, so um, we've got these um, these wonderful duck legs here mm. um, that have been already slow cooked. Um, so they, they, you know, they, they're kind of ready. So what we what we want to do is. Um, we're going to put them back through a hot oven to, to heat through, but also to kind of get that skin yeah. nice and crispy. Um, so that's part of the dish. Um, and then we've got these, uh, we've got this blood orange. So blood yeah. orange um, are in season now for the next few weeks. You know, the seasons seem to get longer on these, but you know, they're, they're, they're fantastic. And they are beautiful. They're beautiful, aren't yeah. they? You know, you can't fail to be. When they're in season. Uh, well, yeah, you've got, to, you've got to use them. So. Or I'll just take the ends off. Quick top and tail. Quick top and tail. And then we're just going to cut this into pieces, like so. God, that's incredible. 
Yeah, look at it. So that's a really good. Yeah. That is a really good example of a blood orange, I have to say. Good. So well, we had um, I'm just being a bit Johan on a moment or two ago making his Sicilian Negroni, which included blood orange. Yeah. So I'm just imagining these delicious blood oranges being squeezed into that. Well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they're they they're, 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 you know they're, they're absolutely fantastic. Yeah. So blood oranges on a, on a tray. Yeah. I duck on there, like so. Yeah, and then that's going to go in the oven. Well, there we go. That's pretty simple. That is pretty simple. <laughs> but again, I think it's, it, you know, what, so what, what will happen is, there's, there's, I think, two things to explain is yeah. that obviously the oranges will cook mm -hmm. and caramelise, mixed with the juices that come out of this duck as it kind of warms through and so on. But it also creates a bit of a trivet, if you like, for the, for the duck. So the bottom of the duck, which is nice and moist, mm -hmm will retain that moisture rather than putting it on a plain, a, a flat tray that, that would then crisp the, the, the bottom. Do you know what yes, I mean? I exactly. So you've got a nice crisp yeah. top and a nice moist underside to the, to the duck. So that's, it's, it's a double purpose thing. Yeah. But it's also, you want those roasted oranges yeah. in there as well. And I'm guessing you're going to do something with oranges, like squeeze them out or use the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, they go with the... Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Great. Okay. Yeah. yeah, lovely. Great. So pop that in there as well. That's good. Um, and so, for the duck breast, so we're sort of yeah. duck two ways, as duck I duck often say in some restaurants. Well, that's right, yeah, duck, duck two ways. Um, so, yes, yeah, so we've got the breast. Um, this you're going you're, you're to sort of pan fry. Well, we're going to pan, down. we're going to pan, yeah, it's a, it's a mix of the two, really. I'll, I'll kind of, um, I'll kind of show you what I mean. Um, it's a bit, it's a, it's a good tip. It's a good tip, because obviously we all know that duck, is delicious, but it's also quite fatty. Yeah. Um, and you know, the ideal duck breast is nice and crispy with just a thin layer of fat. Yeah. Um, but there's a there's a there's a little process to, to uh, that you call which is rendering, which is you crisp and leach the fat off at the same time. And I'll show you how, how we're going to do that. Okay, so folks at home, we've got a bit of a masterclass here. Yeah. To render duck. Yeah. So these ducks are, are yeah, it's a it's a beautiful duck breast. So with a sharp knife, what you want to do mm -hmm. is just lightly score the skin. So when I say light score, you're just brushing a sharp knife over the top, yeah? So you're not actually cutting through. You're not actually cutting through. You don't want to, you don't want to pierce the flesh. It's okay. just to, um, it's just to kind of, you're just cutting through the fat. Okay. And, and why? What is that helping it do? Okay, so what that helps it do is when you're doing this process, yeah. um, it, it, it helps that process. So you're opening up the skin and the fat. Creating so when you're surface area, more yeah. surface area for it to for the fat. Yeah. Does that kind of make sense? It does. Yeah. It does. Just trim that a little bit off little there. Trim there. Yeah. And then so that's so that's that. Um, and then we're going to season the duck. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, salt. Obviously. Generous amount of salt. Generous amount of salt. On both sides. Uh, yeah. I mean, you know, use as much as little. I I love salt. I eat far too much. Um, but there you go. And then skin side down. And I've got like a medium pan on here, okay. so that's kind of, you don't want it too hot because we don't want it to, um, we don't want it to brown too quickly because we want to render that fat off. So if there was no oil, it would no oil, no, no, dry. you don't need any oil. You've got yeah. all the fat element you need in that, in the, in the duck there. Okay. So you don't need any, in fact, we're going to be pouring it off. Right. Um, you know, yeah. so. And then, and then, what we're doing also is starting to cook the duck breast as well. So you know, there's a, there's a whole place. So we're browning the skin. We're taking some of that fat off. So we want a nice crisp skin, really. You know, we don't want too much. Fat. You can see already all this fat. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All this fat that is coming out of the um, uh, uh, of there, which you, we're going to pour off, and you can save that and use for your roast potatoes. Oof, this is. Yeah. So. And this rendering process, yeah. Um, what is it? Sort of ten minutes? Yeah, I'd say it's about it's about ten minutes. Yeah, it's about ten minutes. And then what we'll do is also in the pan, we'll just kind of cook the duck in the pan at the same time as well, and then just let it all. And do you keep it skin side down the whole time? Well, uh, 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 apart from at the at the end of it, you'll, you, you'll turn it over. Yeah, exactly that. Great. So, so you can see already. There we go. I'm going to show you. You know, and then what you need, kind of need to do very carefully. I'm going to do it like that. Is just pour your fat off and go again. Why is that important to pour it off? Um, you, because the idea is that you want a crisp skin. You don't want too much fat on a duck. So we want a crisp skin, a tiny layer of fat. Okay. Otherwise, if you just browned it straight away, you'd get a big, thick layer of fat. So, this, so you pour it off mm. um, because then otherwise it just kind of oh, deep, fries, deep fries. It'll deep fries in there. And you want, you want to keep it. You want to keep the fat, you know, so. Um, 
so that's it. So a bit more. And then, yeah, you can see that we're starting to get a beautiful, crisp, uh, lovely looking skin as well, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Or a good bit of prodding. Yeah, a good bit of prodding, like so. There we go. That's so good. Yeah, it's going to be good. I'm going to pour a bit more off as well. Um, the other thing that we're going to do um, that you can do while you're doing this process is we've got a lovely, um, a lovely duck jus. Yep. Um, that comes in these great jars. Um, and I've got a pan of water on here simmering. Just yep. simmering, that's what you need to do. We're going to pop the jar in there. Okay. Uh, and that will basically just stay nice and warm until you're ready to go. Perfect. Perfect. Really nice and nice easy, easy, that one. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Great, great, great. So we've got the duck leg in the oven. Duck leg in the oven. The pasta's in the oven doing its thing. Yeah. Um, and we're in good shape. We're in good shape. Going to pour some more of that off. Like so. Great. Yeah. Well, um, should we move on to the watermelon salad? Let's do it, yeah. We'll Absolutely, we'll keep an eye on that. As yeah. we go. Yeah, okay. Right. Great. Okay, so, um, yeah, one of my, again, another simple dish, one of my favourite dishes in the book, mm. actually. So, very simple salad, but what's good is you, it's the salty and the sweet of it, I think, is yeah. just kind of, um, uh, it make, makes it makes it a really exciting salad. So, um, get our watermelon. That is a particularly pink piece of watermelon, that's great. Yeah. Um, and then we're just going to take off the, uh, the skin and the, and, the, and the pith. So with a sharp knife again, just run it under the flesh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. As we all know, this is kind of inedible. It would be bitter, bitter anyway. And then so you've got your nice piece of... Yep, go through. Got a nice piece of melon there. Lovely. Yeah. And then I would cut that down the middle lengthwise, mm -hmm. like so. Yeah. Seeds are absolutely fine. Okay, so seeds yeah, are Yeah, 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 absolutely fine. There we go. There we go. So that's going to be lovely, lovely. ready to get mixed shortly. Um, I'm just going to go back to yeah. the duck um, as that's running through. And I think a bit more pour of, you see how much fat actually comes out of this. So, you know, I'm getting excited by the roast potatoes. Yeah, well, exactly, yeah. And then, so, and again, you can see how that's looking. So, I'm going, going. I'm going to give that another minute like that. And then we're going to finish cooking it on the other side, yeah? Okay. Okay, so, um, just pop this over here. Mm -hmm. Pop our watermelon dice in there. And then the other elements, um, we've got, uh, yeah, thank you. There should be some chicory somewhere, some red. Ah, yes, that's hiding behind there. Hiding that. behind there, amazing. Okay. Yeah. Right. Uh, just get the knife to it. Yeah, that's the... <laughs> that's the quickest way. Yeah, so we've got this lovely red chicory. I think one will be enough for this. Yep. And just take the end off, just take the bottom bit off. Cut it down the middle. And then we'll just put in some nice leaves. Great. And the red chicory, it just looks stunning, I think, with, oh. the, uh, with the watermelon. You know, it's all about the... I love chicory, particularly this time of year. Yeah, yeah, it's great. And again, it adds to the, all the... It's very contrasting salad that works well together. You've got the bitterness of the chicory, you've got the sweetness of the watermelon, and then the saltiness of the, of the cheese. So, mm. yeah. There we go. Goes in there. Uh, and then uh, it's assembly, really. We've got these wonderful pistachios that have already been roasted. Cool. Yeah. Pop that there so we get it on yeah, the sure. top cam. So pistachios in there. Mm -hmm. Beautiful green uh, pistachios. Sicily is very well known for their pistachios. I, I don't know. say, so yeah, just Sicily grows pistachios. Yeah, they grow them. I mean, they're known as the best pistachios in the world. It's a place called Bronte, yeah. um, which is not too far from Etna. And yeah, it's known as green, the green gold. Um, and they are, you know, they're, they're, I mean, they're amazing. They're amazing. So um, I'm just going to do the last turn on the duck. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to show you now that that is kind of ready. Turn that over. Yeah. Stunning. Great yeah. Colour. And then we're just going to finish kind of cooking that on that side, yeah? yeah. Perfect. Okay. Um, yeah, so pistachios. 
pistachios are in. Yeah, and then we've got um, some ground nut oil. Okay. And ground nuts for any particular reason? I just think it's a nice, clean, neutral oil. Um, I think I played with this salad a bit. I mean, uh, more often than not, I use olive oil. Yeah. Um, but I don't know, for this, it just seemed to, seemed to work. You know, olive oil, it's not for everything. You know, in Mediterranean cooking, it can mm. kind of skew flavours. So I think I just wanted to use that, okay. um, that for that. So, um, and then, yeah, sorry. And then on the vinegar, I just remind myself, it's called muscatel vinegar, or mo mo muscat vinegar. Yeah. Um, which is a, one of my favourite vinegars, and it's kind of, um, it's sweet, but not overly cloyingly sweet like balsamic. It's kind of a, a really fresh sweet, so um, it's, it's, it's lovely for this. Yeah? Yeah, I love it. So all of that is going in? All of that's going in. And what do you have there? So we've got our pecorino. Uh -huh. Yeah. Pop those out of the way. And I'm just going to kind of grate that in there as well. Yeah. Yeah. Pecorino rather than Parmesan? Yeah, I like it. I mean, Pecorino is very, very, um, very Sicilian. Is it? Yeah, it's the most, it's, you know, sheep, sheep's cheese is, is the most prominent. It's the South North thing. Ex exactly that. I mean, they do use Parmesan, definitely, but, you know, if you go there, and eight times out of ten, it's sheep's cheese. But I love Pecorino. It's got a different, it's got a different flavour. It's the sheep's, it's the sheep's milk coming, coming over. So just um, checking that, giving it a little prod. Um, as is my chef thing, how but, do you know, yeah, yeah. so chef, really, you know, know. I, I, yeah, so it's all about, um, you want a little kind of spring back in the, uh, in the meat, so when you press it, if it's very soft, it's still probably too rare, mm. if it's really hard, it's probably overcooked, okay. so you want somewhere in the middle that kind of, you know, if you do that on the palm of your hand, it kind of springs back yeah. there, just there, and that's kind of where you're looking for, so we're still, a, we're still a, a couple of minutes away, um, but yeah, we want it. Are you into modern meat probes? Um, I'm not personally, no, but my, my chefs are, are so yeah, yeah. yeah. I can't imagine they've sort of reached Sicily yet, have they? No, I don't think so. I think they'd be really frowned upon, actually. Yeah, I'm so. sure. So we just let <laughs> you that. Don't pop those in your book. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so we've got that there, and then um, we've got some, um, some dill in here. Mm hmm. Do that with my knife. There we go. And some nice fronds of that through. Just adds a nice little layer of flavour in yeah. there. And you're, you're being quite sort of like rough with that. You very, know? very no, much so. Yeah, no, yeah, don't, yeah, it's, yeah. Don't be too delicate. I mean, really, you can eat the stalks, you know. There's nothing, I'm not, I'm not a huge fan, you know, with herbs and things like that. If I'm chopping a bunch of parsley, yeah. I'll chop it right down with the stalks on, right, and just until the end, you know, because yeah. this was, you know, why... Why waste it? Why, why waste it, you know, and it's, it's, it's delicious. So I'm not fussy in those respects. Um, so salt. Pepper. Pepper. There we go. And we're just going to get the hands back in. Get the hands back in there. Yeah. And you can see the colours are amazing. Oh, I think amazing. it's it's really it's really lovely. Beautiful. Yeah. Okay. So we're ready uh, to plate so that. One, I they're think. coming your way. Yeah. How's that? Yeah. Great. And then yeah, really just you know piling it up. But what I would probably say is start with kind of a. Uh, a, a little bed of, um, mm. of the chicory just to give it a, a bit of a platform, I guess, mm. and then just kind of build on top of that. Were you looking for a little bit of height? A little bit of height, yeah. You know, I'm uh, so you can see everything. You know, you don't want to hide one thing or another. Yeah. Another, um, but yeah, I'm pretty. Yes. Do, be be creative. Do it as you like. Um, you see, I'm doing it on a dark plate. I think if you have one at home, do do it with a dark plate. I mean, it looks the colours really work well. I think you know, kind of the br those bright colours on a dark plate. And, yeah, there we go. Great. And just pop a bit of the the juice left over it, like so. Wow. Yeah. That's beautiful. Yeah. Really, really beautiful. Yeah, and yeah, that's the uh, that's the watermelon salad. Lovely. Yeah. Well done. Great. Well, I'll put that to one side for you. Please, thank you. And so, yeah, so the duck, I think we're kind of good. I'm just going to kind of move that off. Great. And just let that do it. So you're happy with it? I'm happy with it. Yeah. I'm happy with the duck now, yeah. And you're just going to leave it to rest? Well, you're going to leave it to rest for a few minutes, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly that. So. Great. Well, let's um, clean down a little bit and we'll yeah. move on to um, the bachi. The bachi, yes. Yeah. Yeah, indeed. Thank you very much. There we go. Yeah. 
Um, look at these. Yeah, so these are oh, really interesting, yeah. 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 I think that's everything you need. Again, another favorite here, so. Um, yeah, so these batches, so they are, um, th these are from, um, ins well, inspired, the actual recipe is directly from um, one of the islands off the coast of Sicily, Pant um, Pantelleria. Mm. Um, and they just have this, you know, it's just something that they've had for, 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 for many, many years. And again, I think it's got Moorish, um, it's, it's got Moorish heritage, in fact that they're deep fried, you know, it's a biscuit, but it's kind of a deep fried batter. Um, and that was certainly something that the Arabs brought to, yeah. um, to Sicily and Italy. And all of the med was deep frying, you know, in its very simplest form, it would have been a deep fried, you know, flour and water mix as a dessert, deep fried flour, flour and water mix drizzled with honey. And that would have been, you know, that would have been a dessert, mm. you know, and that was brought by the, the Arab cooks in the Middle Ages. Um, but anyway, so this is their, uh, this, this, this is, um, they're called kissing biscuits. Uh, it's deep fried batter and they've been, they get plunged into a hot iron specifically with this shape. Yeah, why is that? What's the shape signify? It's, um, it's, it's one of the, um, it's one of the symbols of the island. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's one of the, one of the symbols that you. So when you go uh, Pantelleria, it's a fantastic place. I don't know if you've you've ever been. Uh, I have been to Sicily, but I haven't been to that island. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, it's fantastic, and um, you you'll see that uh, uh, you'll see that a lot. Yeah. Um, so very simply, all we need to do with these. Yeah. Um, is just give them a blast back through the oven. Okay. Uh, and it's literally just to warm them through and give them a refresh. Yeah. Um, so I'll just do that now. Everything's looking good in there. Good. Yeah, that's resting nicely. And then um, the other elements are it. So we've got uh, orange um, uh, ricotta mix. So it's kind of whipped ricotta that's been sweetened. Got some kind of orange zest in there as well. And finished with some icing sugar. And we've got these absolutely genius little bags <laughs> of icing sugar, which I'm incredibly impressed with actually. So um, anyway. Oh, that's kind of cool. It is very cool. It's very cool. Yeah. New ways of. Yeah, new ways of packaging, you know, but that's, that's really good. Because um, icing sugar is notoriously, me notoriously messy, isn't it? You know, when you try and get it, it is. Yeah. Yes. It goes everywhere other than where you actually it, want it. It goes everywhere, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Good, good, good. Um, I was going to quickly ask you actually. So, um, what are sort of the Sicilian sort of store cupboard essentials? If you were to open a fridge of a, you know, someone from Sicily, what, what would you expect to find in there? Um, essentials, well, definitely um, lemons, yes. certainly. Lots of, lots of lemons. They're all about lemons over everything. Um, extra virgin olive oil, mm. um, lots of nuts, almonds. Almonds are big in, in well, pistachios are as well, but almonds yeah. are not just kind of eating an almond, but they're used for thickening sauces and things like that. So, you know, nuts as thickeners. Um, and again, harks back from when, you know, they probably, that was the only thing that they, they had to, to, to use to thicken things. So, but they use that. So that's a, that's a, a an Arabic influence as well. Um, so lots of nuts and then tomatoes everywhere. Everywhere. Everywhere yeah, tomatoes. Yeah, yeah. Um, and even in the winter as well, you know, the winter varieties and so yeah. on. So tomatoes everywhere, uh, courgettes everywhere and squashes everywhere. Watermelons are in, in season, they're absolutely everywhere. Right. I think what's nice about Sicily is, you know, they, they are hyper seasonal and only because that's just how it's got to be. So if you're on the coast, you rarely get a meat dish. Mm. If you're inland, you rarely get a fish dish. But we're not talking that far. We're not talking that far, but that's that's how it is. Yeah. And you know, and when and when it's watermelon season, it's everywhere okay. because they're using it. They don't want to waste it. Or it's everywhere. It's in all the dishes, that kind mm. of thing. So, yeah. Great. Yeah. All right. So, uh, just take our biscuits out. Yeah. So yeah, just, just it's refreshed. just a, it's just just refreshed. Mm -hmm. um, and then. Lovely. We've got our. Eight for you on standby. Yeah, we've got a lovely uh, ricotta, and literally spooning it on. Spooning it on. Sandwich. What's in the ricotta. Just remind me. It's so it. it's ricotta, orange zest. Orange zest. zest. Yeah, and yeah, and, and it's sweetened with. Uh, Delicious. Sugar. So yeah, we're just creating sandwiches basically. So. Um, there's, there's nothing not to like, really. Oh, that's the sort of thing my kids would love. Yeah, I mean, they are really cool, I yeah. have to say. Um, so, yeah, be as generous as you like with those. Yeah. Um, okay. I'll put this in snack corner and <laughs> put my finger in there. Yeah. Um, and then 
pop your tops on. Okay, and then uh, and then out icing sugar over the top. There we go. Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> Do we speak too soon? <laughs> <laughs> um, I think you'd probably give it a bit of a. Yeah, that's right. You've got a bit of a, a bit of a. <laughs> there's, a te there's, a there's a technique. There's a technique to it. There you go. There we go. Love it. Love it. There you go. You, f you first seen on on here. There you go. <laughs> Brilliant. Great. Done. Well done. Uh, yeah. So that's those there, ready to go. Great. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And so, uh, I think. Uh, so, so I think then we're going to have a look at the pasta. I think we should. Pasta. Be... Let's check out the pasta and. Um... Yeah. So that's looking really good. Great. As you can see. Put that on there. Yes, it is. Yeah. That's looking lovely. Delicious. Piping hot. We've got a nice gratinate on there, mm -hmm. and you can see that the. Bits of pasta that were poking out have started to brown. That's kind of exactly what you, you want. want those you want those. You want those crunchy bits, bits basically. There, yeah. And so, literally, we've got our nice brown butter sauce here, and that's going to go over the top. Oh, that's just sheer sort of. And you can kind of smell the lemon and the um, and the rosemary just coming through there. I think every pasta bake I do in the future yeah. is going to melt butter over the top. Yeah. I mean, it's it's transformation. Just, yeah. Again, you know, not a Sicilian thing. You, know, you probably rarely see butter in yeah. Sicily, to be honest with you, but i just developing this. Yeah, who cares? Yeah, who cares, Come exactly, on. yeah. So, yeah, I think that looks pretty it good. Smells great. So, yeah, there you go. That's, um, the colours of all these dishes are just splendid. Yeah. They really are. Well, there we go. So, that there is our, uh, yeah. Pop that over here as well. Yeah. Um, right. And we've got the, the, just the duck to go, I think. Just the duck to go, yeah, which um, I think we're probably... Do you think we're there? I think we are... I think we're there, yeah. I right. think we just need our uh, plate out. Perfectly timed, chef. There we go, lovely. There it is. Thank you very much. So, we've got a nice... Yeah, crisp over here. Let's have a look. Crisp on the duck. It's crisped up nicely. Yeah, that's good. So we just pop that on there for now. We've got these lovely oranges that are now kind of cooked through. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's gonna be lovely. Just pop that out of the way, and then our duck breasts. So that's kind of nicely rested. So we're just gonna bring that over to the board. And we've got our sauce as well, which should be nice and hot. There we go. Just turn everything off. Like so. Great. Okay. And so all I'm going to do with the duck is cut it down the middle. Uh, I'm not kind of carving it any other way. And I just think it's, uh, you, can, you could slice it if you wanted it. This is, this is how I'd probably do it in the restaurant. It's just one cut down the middle. I just think it kind of looks better. Um, give it a little season as you cut it, so that underside is like so. Lovely. See, and that's kind of nice Absolutely and pink. Absolutely to perfection. Yeah, that's great. And then I think lovely crisp skin. Yeah, that fat's rendered perfectly. That fat's rendered perfectly. You've got your fat there for your roast potatoes uh, there. And then the sauce. Nice and hot, you can see that. Yeah. That's great. And we just kind of pour that over, like so. There Gosh, we go. Wonderful. I've just made a little bit of a mess there, but there you go. Well. So that is, yeah, that, I suppose, as you said, that's the main event. So that is, again, colours. It's kind of it's the time of year for those kind of colours, isn't it? You've got beautiful blood orange, uh, nice duck leg there, and the, and the roasted rendered uh, duck breast, blood orange sauce. Superb, superb. Wow, Ben. Well, look, what we should do is let's get this board out of the way. Yeah. Let's put all these dishes together so we get a really good shot on the overhead pan. Let's do it. Yeah. And then I'll ask you just to do a final little sure. run through of all this deliciousness that everyone at home is creating as well. Mm. So over to you. What do we have? OK, so we've got the mackerel crudo um, with fennel and preserved lemon. Um, we have uh, watermelon and red chicory salad with pistachios. Um, and um, and the dill in there. Uh, then we've got our baked pasta shells with um, within the, in that bechamel sauce with uh, roasted pumpkin and a brown butter rosemary lemon uh, sauce over the top. Um, and then we have the duck 
roast duck breast, roast rendered duck breast, roasted leg, um, blood orange and blood orange sauce. And then the kissing biscuits, the Bacchi Pantelleria with uh, whipped ricotta and orange. Ben, incredible. What a feast. What a Sicilian feast. Absolutely. Thank you so very much. Pleasure. Thanks okay. for having I, me. Yeah, it was I great. I can't wait to, to, to tuck into all of this. Um, it's been a real treat. Thank you for sharing all your knowledge and expertise. Pleasure. And taking us from one little island to another. Indeed, it's indeed. Great yeah. Journey. All right. No, thank you. No, it's great. You. Really enjoyed it. Thank good, you. good, good. So folks at home, I hope you've had fun. Um, please do take photographs of your of your food and uh, yeah, put them onto Instagram, tag us, tag him um, and um, share them with us all. And of course, um, complimentary box to those who win to uh, the next cook along in two weeks time, the season finale where we have the flavors of the Middle East with Sabrina Gayor. And uh, that's on the 24th, 25th of March. Um, she is, of course, an award-winning author and is the authority on um, Medi um, Middle Eastern and Persian food. So we'll be looking forward to seeing her. Please tell your friends and family all about us for the last stop of our winter tour. Thank you so much to Ben. Pleasure. And thank you for joining us tonight. Goodbye.